So my info today is to share with you about integrating clean energy into power grids lessons from East Africa. I've tried not to be very biased and focus more on Kenya, but to try and uh, just indicate a picture of what is really happening in East Africa as clean energy and renewable energy is concerned, and also the role of uh, climate and weather information. So in my presentation, I'm just going to give a brief introduction. I'll try also to give some opportunity for clean energy within East Africa region, and also give energy outlook for East Africa. Highlight maybe one of the benefits which uh, Kenjin has actually in the recent uh, past, and those who look at the news, maybe some got a glimpse of it. And also looking at the challenges of integrating uh, renewable energy and clean energy, and then I just give a conclusion on that. To start with, uh, uh, if you look at uh, the Sustainable Development Goal, number seven, which focuses on ensuring access to affordable, reliable, and sustainable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. This is actually the key aspect is uh, affordability and uh, how clean this energy is. So it's like, if we provide it for all, it should be actually accessible. So if you look at East Africa, we have got a lot of potential for renewable energy, which include hydropower, geothermal, wind power, solar, and biomass, among others, which may also be uh, existing. Then there is also an opportunity for nuclear power, which is also considered uh, as clean. A nuclear, as you know, is a base load, which can also be uh, reliable, despite its investment cost being uh, too high. In order to move towards zero greenhouse gas emissions, clean energy is expected to play a major role Actually, when you look at the expansion generation, the generation expansion plans for the East African uh, uh, region uh, countries. But for you to do this, weather and climate information will always play a critical role in planning and operations of uh, clean energy. As you will realize that most of the renewable energy are driven by weather and uh, climate uh, uh, patterns. Now, Looking at the opportunities for clean energy within the uh, Eastern Africa region, first of all, the opportunity we have is that the electricity generation exp expansion programs in the region is right now focusing more on clean energy and specifically renewable energy so that we try to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere which of course, you know the impact of that in terms of environmental management. Then electricity demand is also growing. The drivers say in electricity demand growth is attributed to the population growth, which is uh, growing. And then we have also rapid urbanization uh, growth within the region. The specific consumption also is growing based on actually the income for, uh, for, for, for homes and individual consumers, the GDP growth. And also the Vision 2030, which has actually uh, proposed quite a number of projects uh, which are going to uh, consume a lot of uh, electricity. And this is also recently, you can also remember the Big Four Agenda, which is also uh, trying to concentrate on uh, quite some projects which can also contribute towards of the electricity demand growth. And this will create opportunity for a lot of investment within the region and because the focus is on renewable energy, so this actually plays a key role to, and to integrate renewable energy into the system. Then I just had a glimpse of East African uh, regional uh, energy outlook. And uh, I've just picked some few countries. So if I start with a country, uh, uh, Kenya, which has got uh, an installed capacity of approximately 200 and uh, 2,000, 819 megawatts, that's 2.8 gigawatts. And you'll find that more than 90% of this is coming from renewable energy sources. If you look at Uganda with 1.2 gigawatts, also has got more than 90% from renewable energy sources. If you go to Tanzania, Tanzania with the 1.5 gigawatts, but only 30% is renewable because they only have a hydro, a, a hydropower 
installed capacity of around 500 megawatts. So this forms only about 30%. So there's still room to incorporate a lot of uh, renewable and clean energy into the system based on the resources which is available also in that country. If you look at Rwanda, Rwanda also out of the 280 megawatt installed capacity, about 50%, only about 50% is renewable, while the rest actually are uh, from uh, the fossil fuels. If we go to the north where we have Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Ethiopia has got an installed capacity of close to five giga, uh, gigawatts. And for Ethiopia, you'll find that more than 95% are coming from energy, renewable energy sources. This is an indicated indication that East Africa actually has really embraced the renewable energy and their development agenda in terms of energy is focusing on more of a renewable energy, which is a clean energy. Then uh, when you do uh, renewable energy projects, there are benefits which can also come with it to try and actually uh, earn some benefits which can be uh, towards the reduction of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And I wanted just to give an example of what maybe most of you have seen actually in the papers, whereby uh, uh, UNFCC has just issued Kenjian with the uh, CERs, CERs actually is a, okay, the, 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 these are about uh, carbon credits. So the CERs which have been issued by UNFCC is equivalent to around 4.6 million tons. And now Kenyan is in the process of actually selling these CERs to interested parties. And we are just in the process of a preparing an advertisement for the interested parties who can purchase this. And this is also going to have additional income for Kenjian, whereby Kenjian can again invest this in quite a number of programs which are being done within the, uh, the organization. And uh, what I've displayed there is just the process of how any institution which is investing in renewable energy can also benefit from this CDM process where it has from right from development of the project idea note, and it goes through several processes. And if you look at that diagram, you'll find that Kenjian actually having uh, received the CER certificates is just about to benefit from that when we get the payment for the CERs which we have actually been issued with from UNFCC. Then when we do the renewable energy and clean energy, there are quite a lot of challenges which we have to deal with. Because yes, I've had the predecessors actually talking about the renewable energy, the solar, the wind, the hydro. But some of the challenges we have is intermittency for the case of wind and solar. And you find that this energy may be available when you don't need it. So what happens is like, and you cannot store it, so it goes to waste. Sometimes when you need it is when it is not there. So this is one of the challenges which need to be dealt with. Then we have the, gener the base load generation plans like for geothermal and nuclear, whereby you cannot vary them. They cannot follow the load when you need them. When people go home in the evening, everyone starts putting on the lights and you find the power, the electricity demand goes up. And these plants are not able to do that load following and it poses a, another challenge in that area. Then we have the hydropower, which has always, always been a, looked at a, a very proven technology. And this hydropower uh, plays a major role in our electricity system by actually trying to manage the system. It can uh, be used as a base load. It can follow load. It can meet the peak demand. But there's another challenge which hydropower has as concerned climate change and uh, variability, which affects hydropower actually in the region. Because you know, as a region, we have a bimodal rainfall pattern. So we expect to fill these uh, reservoirs for hydropower during the rain, rainfall season that we have the short rains and the long rains. And we have also two dry seasons within. And these sometimes when you expect the rains, you find the rain you expect is not adequate. And therefore it gives you a challenge on how to manage that. Then we, with the renewable energy also, this what we call the relatively high investment cost. Remember when you had to put a, a, a fossil fuel, you only need to look for a location which is very convenient to you. Looking at this location can be closer to the 
some station. It can be closer to a good tarmac road where exploitation of the, the, the equipment will not be a challenge. It can be put next to a load center to try and minimize also even the transmission and distribution challenges. But with rene renewable energy, you have to go to where the resource is. And this is always coming with some associated investment costs, which actually pose a challenge in a, integrating this renewable energy into the system. Now, if you look at the generation mix, and this balance is always critical because different uh, renewable energy sources play different uh, roles in the system. So to meet its energy needs, each country now utilizes the types of energy available to it in differing proportions. This will depend on the resource availability and where it is, the transmission infrastructure, because you may have a lot of potential, but you don't have transmission infrastructure, which can be able to deliver this energy to where it is needed. Then the technology role in the system, as I have just said, like they say, we are rich in a geothermal, which we have really upscaled, but geothermal alone cannot survive alone in the system because you know the power demand characteristic changes and we have different uh, characteristics, characteristics of load curves, whereby in the morning, everyone, is having a lot of demand for electricity. And when it comes to during the day, you find that demand goes down. So you really need to get how to balance and uh, be able how to understand your system, to be able to, uh, to, to have constant supply uh, of electricity in the system. And I've also talked about demand and demand characteristics because we can say we have a higher demand, but this demand, you know, it changes within the day and we need a system which can actually, uh, uh, address that. Then we have also the technology levelized cost of electricity, which also has been a challenge, but there are some other variations. And looking at the next slide, uh, this is a slide which uh, I managed to get from the IRENA, and it was published in 2018, looking at how the uh, levelized cost of electricity has been changing. This is at the utility level. And you can see there's a big drop in solar and also actually almost the renewable energy, most of them have been dropping. And unfortunately you can see hydro a little bit rising and even the geothermal also is a little bit rising. And this is actually associated with the, the several factors because uh, as I had explained, it depends on where these resources are and when to tap it actually depends on uh, where it is and where you want it to be delivered. But again, based on improved technology, you can see quite a number of a, a, a cost coming down. And I think this will be good news and also to support our expansion plan in terms of the delivering clean energy into the uh, electricity grid. I've just given, I want just to give also a, a, just a picture of the technology roles in the actual electricity system to, uh, to inform on how do you work out uh, a mix which actually ensures you have a sustainable supply of electricity. Like when you have geothermal and you have a single flash system like what you are using in Kenya, it can only supply a base load because it's not very flexible. So you cannot vary it much. As opposed to, uh, to the binary system, which, can, which is very flexible, which can actually offer a lot of roles. This is a base load, load matching, peak uh, matching and so on and so forth. But the only challenge, because I know somebody may ask, why don't we go binary? The binary system is relatively expensive. And you know, uh, like Kenyan and even the countries within the region are still having small electricity uh, system, which when you introduce some expensive technology, it drives the cost of electricity high. And everyone is actually shouting that we need to reduce the cost of electricity. So we are trying to still to use the single flash system as we still have a small electricity system to ensure that people get access to this electricity. Hydropower, of course, as I have mentioned, it's a very flexible technology and this helps actually in uh, covering the gaps, the, the, the fluctuations in the, the, the demand in the system. And also, uh, even if there's a loss of generation somewhere, hydro is, comes in handy because it only takes a few seconds and actually it covers the gap which has been left in the system. When you talk of wind and solar, these are intermittent uh, sources which actually keep on fluctuating now and, and, and then they can be available when you, you don't need them and they may not be there when you need them. Then we have biomass which can also be consistent and can also offer a base load because of the inflexibility. 
We also have nuclear and all of you are aware that uh, Kenya and even Uganda are trying to pursue the nuclear program and they are going to play a role of just supplying base load and therefore those are the challenges which need to be, to be addressed. Then the other thing which uh, uh, also this, uh, the first presenter mentioned is the interconnections. Yes, we cannot survive on isolation. So the isolation, the interconnections also actually come in handy whereby the countries which are in the same region can actually pull together and have a strong interconnection system whereby even if a plant is down in another country, the other neighboring country can come in handy to support that and supply the much needed electricity in the system. And this becomes uh, very good for the country. And as you are aware, I think the East African power pool is being is in preparation and discussions. And I think very soon it will come to, uh, to actually to be implemented to support our electricity, grid, grid electricity system. Then I would like to, uh, conclude by saying that the East African region has got sufficient renewable energy resources for balancing future power systems. Then due to climate change challenges, due to climate change challenges, new technologies for uh, energy storage can be exploited. A good example is a pumped uh, storage hydropower project, which actually acts as a battery, but their role is to actually in integrate more renewable uh, energy in the system, more, or more so the intermittent ones, whereby this storage system absorbs that energy which is available when you don't need it and you cannot store it, to utilize that to pump the water to be stored so that this water is ready to be, to be utilized during the peak demand and when actually this energy is, uh, is needed. And by having this pump storage uh, hydropower system, systems uh, actually in the electricity grid is going to allow or create opportunity for more renewable energy to be brought into our systems, including even the intermittent uh, resources. Then weather and climate information is critical in planning and operations of clean energy technologies. Because before you even package a plant, you have to understand the weather and the climate situation and even the climate projected scenarios to know what impact on, or going forward, how are these plants going to operate to ensure that they don't actually, they are not actually impacted or negatively by the weather characteristics and also the climate trends actually which are expected within that area. So they will be critical in planning. And when it comes to operations like what uh, happens in Kenya, like I've said that hydropower becomes very critical. So we really get to know how the climate or the weather forecast is going to behave to be able to know how much hydro Power we can actually make available for management of the system and also to ensure that we conserve the water which is being used for hydropower to be able to supply this hydropower throughout the, the period and uh, throughout the year. Then I've also talked about the palm storage uh, hydropower, what I'm calling the PSP, that's the palm storage uh, uh, project Ca that can utilize, that can be utilized in managing the intermittent and the base load like a good example in Olkaria, when it comes to at night when now the only very few people need electricity, we have to be forced to rent the steam, which actually has costed us money to, 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 to harvest. So we think that if we bring the palm storage into the system, then this waste of uh, steam will not occur. So the steam venting will be reduced so that instead of venting the steam, we can actually use that energy to pump the water to wait for the for, for, for the next uh, demand in electricity. But in short term, because PSP is a long-term project, but we have also proposed the short-term battery storage in the system, which can also store this excess energy, electricity, and this can now be uh, sent to the consumers when it is needed. Then interconnectivity, which is also critical in ensuring stable supply of electricity in the, the region. And I've just explained that once we have those bilateral agreements, it means as a region, we can have a very stable electricity system. And remember, when you talk about the East African uh, uh, region, the countries may not be rich in all the resources. Different countries are rich in different resources. So this is what can be balanced to have a very stable and sustainable electricity supply. But remember when you have renewable energy, 
weather and climate information is very key to inform on, form you on how do you do your planning and how do you do your dispatch of the electricity into the uh, electricity uh, mix. I think that brings me to an end to my brief presentation and it was a bit general to try and actually capture at global level actually what is existing and how to move forward and the benefits of actually using renewable energy. Thank you.